What's up, Unleashed Humans? If you know me, you know that I am constantly trying to make my life, my health, and happiness the best it can be. Whether that's getting stronger, optimizing my digestion, trying new biohacks, and simply finding ways to become happier every day. If you are looking to do the same with your life, then I have just a thing for you, and the best thing is, it's all in one place. And that special something is a free copy of my book, The Unleashed Human. Inside this book, you will find the strategies I have learned and tried to optimize my life and body. You can get your free copy of The Unleashed Human by going to www.theunleashedhuman.com forward slash unleashed. Again, that is www.theunleashedhuman.com forward slash unleashed to get a copy of my free book. No shipping, no payments, totally free, straight to your email. Check it out while it is still up for grabs. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Unleashed Human Podcast with your host, Dr. TJ Woodham. Now today, I'm honestly super stoked to have my guest on today. Uh, I've been trying to get him on for a while now because he's super busy doing all the stuff he's doing. Uh, My guest today is seriously a freak of nature. He is the younger brother of Dr. Justin Wilcox, who was previously on the show. And ever since I've known this guy, he has been the hardest worker in the room and in the classroom, and he was actually valedictorian of his class. Now, in undergrad, he did a dual degree in engineering and liberal arts while he was a college athlete, which to me is super impressive, also keeping up his grades. He was a starting court running back at the University of Pennsylvania, and at the Combine, he scored an 11.3 foot broad jump, which is freak nature. So as a freshman, he power cleaned 345 pounds. Like, that's, that's ridiculous. He was an Ivy League champion and re- received an honorable mention All-Ivy. He is currently on the USA National World Cup bobsled team and was the rookie push champion. He, just like his brother, is one of the greatest and most giving people I know. He is Kyle Wilcox. Welcome to the show, Kyle. <laughs> Thank you for having me. What an, what an intro. <laughs> that, was, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, I had to do it, man, because you're just an, you're an animal. And there's a lot of stuff <laughs> I was probably missing out there, too. So, um, but, hey, so, Kyle, before we, we get into what makes you a freak, right, you mm-hmm. have an incredible story growing up that, in my mind, makes you and your brother absolute studs. Now, do you want to touch on that? Yeah, so I guess I don't know how much Justin covered when you spoke with him, but it was a lot of stuff with my family. It kind of started happening before, like, the the big event. Um, but basically, when I was little, I uh, was born in Hong Kong. Um, fun little fact there. We lived there for until I was two. So my older brother was probably five when he moved out of uh, Hong Kong. And we moved to Princeton, New Jersey, where I kind of grew up uh, until like early elementary school. Um, And my parents during like close to the end of my elementary school started, we started noticing something like different with my mom where um, she basically just seemed off and that led to my parents basically getting divorced and um my siblings my older brother justin uh little sister kendall and my father moved to tampa florida where that's where i consider i really like grew up um and it was just because my mom wasn't in the right state to take care of us um always really good intentions from her uh, you've met her a few times, yes, TJ. I know. You know yeah. She always she always has good intentions. Just <laughs> the way she thinks and goes about stuff is it's uh, very very different. Um, sometimes it's not the the complete. You should probably do the whatever complete opposite of what she's doing. <laughs> um, so uh, we moved down to Florida where. Things like you're you're a kid, you know, you don't really know to like the details of like what's going on in life, like from what adults do and like the actual problems that are arising from that. 
Um, so living with our dad, um, like at this point in my life, like t speaking with my mom is like very difficult. Cause like as a kid, you can't understand why she's acting a certain way. Like why she's going about these things. Like, and even like to really appreciate, like there's still the thought that she has of you, but like just the way she had gone about. So it was like, uh, I wouldn't, abusive is not the right word for it, but just like not a good way to go about it. Um, so like didn't want to speak with our mom, basically lived with our dad. And then eighth grade for me, my dad got arrested. Um, and I, I don't like going into detail about like why he got arrested, mm -hmm. but basically that forced my siblings and I to go into foster care. Um, my mom just like mentally could not take care of us. So that was, wasn't really an option. And so my siblings and I end up getting split between different places. My brother went to go live with a family um, that eventually adopted him. And then my little sister went and lived with my aunt who lived in Michigan. So she moved up there. But for me, um, it was a little different to where we didn't really know what was going to go on with me. I lived with my uncle and grandfather for a while, but there was like no family that like, like for Justin and Kendall, they, they were stepped up and adopted. Um, but there, there were plans in place. Um, but for me, I was in limbo for a little longer than them where they were getting everything sorted out. Um, but eventually what happened was like in this whole process of becoming foster kids, our house is getting like foreclosed, taken by the bank. Um, and it's basically Justin, my, Justin, me and my uncle, they're moving everything out of this house. Right. So this is an eighth grader moving all this stuff out of his house. There's no AC in Florida. The house is like 90. People are wondering where you are. You're trying to balance school with this. I'm getting like stress migraine headaches as an eighth grader. Right. Um, and so that's definitely like a really hard time in, our, in my life. But I was fortunate enough to where um, we're going to Costco to like buy some food, not Costco, like Sam's Club or something. And we see, um, and no one really knows what's going on with my family at this point besides like the internal uh, family and we're moving stuff out and we needed to get something from the store. So we see my old uh, little league football coach um, at the store and he just asked how we're doing. My dad helped out with the football team every now and then. So he was like, Oh, how, how's it going? Um, and we explained the whole like family situation and how we're going into foster care and stuff. And luckily like he steps up to the plate and he's like, what can I do to help? And he ends up taking me in actually. So I was never adopted by him, but he was my guardian um, for a while um, up until basically middle of junior year of high school. I lived with him and I'm like eternally grateful for that. Like still talk to him all the time. Actually like just talk to him on Thanksgiving for like an hour or two, just like catching up. Um, and he was a, he was a single dad. His wife had like passed away from cancer. Mm. So for him to like step up, I, and like just be that fatherly figure for me, um, was something that I'm very appreciative of. Um, because a lot of kids in those situations, like don't get that support that like Justin, my sister and I got where we had people that were willing to help us. Um, that, that really helps. And so we lived with him for a for a while and I always maintained contact with my brother Justin this entire time and he he was he kind of stepped up and was that father figure as well um we, like we would train together like go work out like do visits because we would still visit my grandfather and uncle a decent amount so we would drive up basically every weekend like an hour and a half drive um to northern Florida where we would visit our father you know in prison and stuff and so justin and i hung out all the time like our sister was in michigan otherwise she would probably have been there too but uh so hung out with justin all the time absorbed all the like training information <laughs> yeah. with that um and just really like try to do the most with the situation you're given right like you're not especially as a kid you're not going to be able to change that stuff but um 
ended up doing well enough throughout all of this to where um, I was able to be the valedictorian in my school and do well enough in, in sports to where, um, like, yeah, there were definitely hard times where, like, I remember there was one weekend, because I, I did end up moving in with Justin my senior year. Right. Um, and there were times where we were definitely, like, struggling on money, where it was like, okay, how are we going to have food for this week um, type stuff. And, I mean, Justin made it work where he was playing college football, living with me, yeah, taking me to school, you know, like, just, like, the normal stuff that, like, most – people do but you realize that there's there's a lot going on to make just these little things happen in your life and um so with all of that I did well enough to eventually get uh get into UPenn which like coming from like a small school and all that family stuff like I was like wow like that was the first time where I like thought about it I was like wow like I'm very lucky to get where I am and went to UPenn for, for free, played football there. And um, it all turned out to be the best that it could be, you know, like very, I feel like I'm very blessed despite everything that's happened. And I'm very lucky to have met the people and had the experience that I've had. Um, Cause it, it is very easy to go down like just a different path there. Um, right and you you see kids do it so you hope that you can help out um now with everything yeah well your story and your brother's story is like absolutely amazing and every time i hear it honestly gets better and better so (laughs) when i i'm just like i don't know how you guys did it it's just it's really really cool and i'm honestly like thankful to know you guys because like that story like honestly when i think about it i was like dang man like i had it like really easy and it's just like thinking about it's like gosh you guys are just freaks to be able to do all that so we've that had a lot you, of people help so it's, yeah uh, but still it, i mean it, yeah like you at said, the end of the day you do have to do it but people make and relationships make things a lot right. easier yeah now you and your brother justin have been lifting weights and getting strong for seriously as long as i've known did you always have an attraction to lifting or did your brother have some influence on you so when did i started training like intensely in like sixth seventh grade because oh my god you, you would see but we didn't start i didn't start weight training until basically like high school gotcha. um where like football workouts really because before that we my brother and i would do uh, like hit style workouts so a lot of agility and running based yeah. stuff um with mark grunt i don't know how to pronounce mark's last name so i'm sorry mark <laughs> if you listen to this, um, but we worked out at a place called Speed Source in in Brandon, Florida, and we were just trained there constantly. And I I have always had that like drive, like workouts and like sports and stuff has always been like a way to like clear my mind and like really focus on just like being in the moment. And that's that's what I really like about it. And now it's it's kind of been ingrained <laughs> into me since yeah. then, you know, so now it's just part of my daily life. Um, that's awesome, man. No, that's super cool. Now, like you, like I said, like you guys have been training for a while. How were you guys so strong when you were like, even like, you know, th- not even like, you know, middle school, but then like, you know, in high school and everything like, God, you guys were just freaks compared to everybody else. How were you guys like lifting so much weight? Like, um, what were you doing? I think, one is and yeah we, we've been very blessed with like good genetics to where we can like do well but I think one thing and this is I was actually thinking about this the other day one thing that kind of like aggravated me is when people say like like god-given talent or like they're just genetic freaks like there's definitely an advantage like some help from that but I think it overshadows the amount of work that gets put in to stuff like we love training which was great and i think that's something that really like we didn't care about like having to i remember in high school we would wake up at 4 a.m and go to the gym to like lift heavy and then we would we would go to we would go back to uh class i remember waking up and i had like a i took ap college courses in high school and i remember 
going to the gym right before one of the big exams. Oh my god! After I got in the lift um, before, I was like, "That's just as important as this exam." <laughs> <laughs> um, and then went incredible. And it, I'm pretty sure it helped me do better on the exam, actually. But there's like little stuff like that where we've always had that drive to like really, and I think that shows when you're doing stuff like maxes and stuff like you have that confidence because i do think a lot of people like i think you're seeing it now too like with a lot of like these instagram stories and like people are people are really strong like a lot of people are really strong it's just that um it was a little hidden before then but now like you're starting to see like oh like this person's that strong or this person's that strong and it's like a lot of people can get strong you just have to like put in the work um and I think like there's putting in the work, but then there's like you actually like dedicating your time and being on a routine and stuff. And I think that's something that uh, was established early on uh, in Justin and I. And I think it showed since that um, and we were able to dedicate from there. Yeah, man. No, I totally agree. And I remember there was a time where I just in my mind, I thought gym is life, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and if you live, if you live around that, concept i mean but you know obviously take care and take yeah. care of like other stuff in your life but like like gym almost like comes first with certain things like then of course you're gonna get stronger you're gonna get faster you're gonna get more athletic but it's really comes down to consistency i've found a consistency in anything in life is what's going to make you successful like doing mm-hmm. things over and over and over again you know people give up too quick man and i totally agree and with your your like work ethic man like it's like incredible you and your brother. Like I, I remember when I was living with your brother and like, you know, I was lifting a good amount, but Justin lifted every single day. If he wasn't lifting, he was doing something in the gym. And I'm like, mm-hmm. gosh, dang, <laughs> I was like, how did he do it? You know? So, and like, I know you're the same way and it's like, yeah. kind of like an itch. So, um, mm-hmm. no, I, I totally agree. Now, Kyle, many people don't know much about bobsledding and how difficult it is to be on a team. Like it's super hard to get yeah. on the team. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about how you got on the team and like where you decided to do that? Yeah. So I guess like the path to do it. So the reason I tried out for Bob Slater is because my brother had previously done it. Um, and he stopped for chiropractic school and he, cause it's very hard to like continue to do Bob sled and, and right. you have to literally be there for school. You, you know, the whole process. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you can't do both, especially when bobsled requires you to travel around the world. Um, but the tryouts basically go, the start is where you do a combine, um, kind of like a pro day where you do a 45 meter sprint where they measure certain intervals to see like just what your speed is. You do a broad jump. Um, and then you do basically a granny shot put toss, uh, a oh. 16 pound shot put for as far as you can Jeez. Um, and that this is the first combine and this is where you get scored kind of like a decathlon a hundred points max um a hundred points per event and there's mm-hmm. six events uh total in that first one if you include the sprint the jumps and the throw um and if you hit a certain point threshold um they'll invite you to basically a rookie camp so I did very well at the combine. I ended up being like one of the top scorers in it. And um, so with that, um, I got invited to rookie camp, which is basically you go to Lake Placid for a week and they teach you how to push a sled because it's not just like a thing, a prowler or like workout sled where you push it. And like a lot of people have done those, but it doesn't move the same as, as a sled when, or a bobsled, when you're pushing it, it goes faster as you push it. It doesn't like, if you let go, it, it'll it keep going for a long time as opposed to a workout sled when you stop pushing, it's just going to stop mm. in place. So you have to have the speed to keep up with it and keep applying force to the sled as it's going faster and faster. Um, so not everyone knows how to do that. I didn't know how to do it. So in the first week, <laughs> They teach you how to do this. And at the end of the week of the rookie camp, they invite you uh, or they do a competition um, to see like where everyone stands. And I ended up winning the rookie camp and there were some 
incredibly athletic people here. So I was like, oh gosh, like I came into it. I was like, I have no clue how I'm going to do. Cause I, I was one of the smaller guys there. Like a lot of these guys were like, Oh, plus, they're massive, man. They're, yeah. they're, they're plus 210, 220 area. And I'm at rookie camp, I was sitting like at a solid like 195. So I was like, okay. Like, and your weight's <laughs> important because that's how, like, the more you weigh, there's more force being applied to the right. sled um, at the start, especially like moving it at the start. So um, I ended up doing, uh, like, especially like going into competition day. Like, I was like, all right, I'm going to be happy if I, like, get, like, top five. Um, <laughs> and then I end up doing pretty well where I, I win the rookie camp. Um, especially, and during this, I was also doing the skeleton rookie camp as well. Mm-hmm. So, skeleton's the one where you go face first down the track. And they, oh they, gosh. Teach you how to, they teach you how to push that. So, I was doing basically, like, a double practice every day um with it and that one i was pretty confident in actually so i thought it was going to do pretty well in that one um so i end up doing i end up winning the rookie push champs and i get third in the skeleton push champs uh for the rookies i think i think i could have maybe got first in it but (laughs) there, there are some freaks in the skeleton um push champs as well so it was nice to do really well um and with that it was kind of like, okay, well, what am I going to do next? Like I can do either one. Um, and, uh, I got invited back to the bobsled national push champs, which is the next phase of it where you're pushing against everyone now, like all the veterans come back. Um, the rookies that they like will come back. Um, and you basically do the same thing you did for the rookie camp where you push a sled for, it's like 30, 40 meters. Um, and they give you a time. Um, and I ended up doing pretty well on that where I placed again. Well, I didn't win it this time. You got some former Olympians there that they, they're beasts and I, I hope to catch up to them. <laughs> um, but they, they're really cool. Like they're just very helpful because when these events are decided by like hundredths of a second sometimes. So like being there's the difference between like the top and the people that are just really good it's very small but that's when you're doing world-class events like that's going to be the difference um so uh, i did well at that well enough to then we had team trials for the u.s which basically the team trials is where you push on ice for the first time Mm -hmm. um of the season and i was on um my friend hunter church's sled and pushing on ice it's not the same as pushing on the track so not everyone translates to pushing on the ice as well just because it's running on ice no one really runs on ice yeah. before yeah. that um but did well enough have, like that. certain shoes that you wear i'm sure like spikes. yeah you you wear ice spikes okay which is it's like a track spike but with a lot more spikes attached like to blades it. on it <laughs> Basically, very like there's like 300 tiny spikes on the bottom of mm. the plate, um, and so you do that. They make sure that you can like go down the track for the first time because there have been people apparently before that like go down the track and they're like, "I'm not doing this," because it is intense. They, they're like they're sc- they get scared. It's like kind of like freaky, or what is it that they? <laughs> it's like getting hit in a football game, like very really? hard. If I had to describe it, well, when the when that when it turns, yeah, the it, especially especially when you're not like as you get more used to it, you're better at riding in the back of a sled. But mm-hmm. like as a rookie, you don't know what to expect, right? So you're getting you're jostling around just because you don't uh-huh. know what to do. Like um, as you get better and like you learn what curves coming up, you can't anticipate it, so mm-hmm. it doesn't like jerk you around basically um gotcha. but as a rookie you don't know how to do any of that like i'm still learning how to do that in my first season um so that's something that i'm trying to improve on actually but w- the first time you go down it's a definitely a shot you take a few shots when you go down so like people definitely like they i could see why people stop um okay. if they're not used to 
like coming from a football background, it probably helped me out a lot because I'm used to getting rocked a few times. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you have a lot of guys from track backgrounds, just like not used to the hits yet, you know, and mm. they, most people are fine, but they like everyone uh, this year, I don't think anyone stopped from going down, but in previous yeah. years, they said that people have stopped from going down. Now, um, when you go, when you went through that, did you have like a lot, were you like sore and you know, all that stuff? Uh, and then, my low back was a little sore because you're getting basically <laughs> folded in half as you go oh down. Cause you basically gosh. try and put your head into your knees to be as low as possible. Ah, so you don't yeah. create drag. So when you're doing that, it's usually pr- fine, but, um, you'll get to the point where, uh, in those pressures or the curves, like it'll force your head down oh. beyond what you can actually go. Right. So your low back does feel it a little bit. That's why warming up is like really key um, to it. And usually if you warm up, you're, you're fine, but you do get a little sore. Do you have any like recovery techniques that you, you guys utilize after your bobsled? Do they do anything with you? Modalities they, a anything? lot of people, a lot of people do ART. Um, okay. They, we have an ART specialist. So for people that don't know what that is, that's active release technique. So go ahead, Kyle. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people get ART. There's a team chiropractor as well. Um, they don't go to everywhere. We had one in Canada recently, but they're usually a volunteer chiropractor and they help out. Um, the PT does some adjustments, but... Um, I don't, I don't get adjusted by him. I usually just do the ART. We bring around Normatex, which are basically the air compression sure. massage yeah. things. I don't really, that's what I call them. Well, are you um, a fan so, of them? Are you a fan of those? Um, like them? I, I hadn't done them before. Um, so I started using them and it's okay. Um, it's nice to get a little massage and pressure on there. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely helps how much it helps. I don't know too much. I like doing it. It's not something that I like require in my recovery though. Um, we you like cold baths though, don't you? Yeah, we, we didn't have, we don't have cold tubs when we travel, but um, I would cold tub when I was uh, at the training center and uh, I did hot tub a lot. <laughs> when nice. I'm a big fan of saunas, but there's no sauna <laughs> travel, but normally there's a hot tub at like hotels or something so we would just hop in that um which was nice just like letting the body relax a little bit um and then just like general stretching rolling out if something's tight like your hips get pretty tight um from doing all this stuff so we have like a cross ball as like normal just roll out stuff for your hips um that we would work on but i I don't probably do it as much. I'm one of the younger guys, so I think my body's a little bit more pliable than some right, of the older right. guys. Not that the older guys definitely, like, they know what they're doing because these guys are plus 30, and I'm pretty sure they're all more athletic than me. So <laughs> um, they, they definitely know what they're doing, you know, um, especially, like, to keep it up as, as you get older, you know. But right. they've, they've figured it out big time. Because gotcha. these guys, I'm like, how are they doing this? They've been like maintaining this for so <laughs> well, long. They say like you know? your peak performance comes at like 30 or something like that. Yeah, the research so. shows at least. Yeah, um, they're they're definitely beasts. So just trying to catch up with them and like stay recovered like them. Hey, you're gonna be there, man. I know <laughs> you will, man. I know you're a hard worker. So now, what kind of routines do you guys do each day? Like, what is your typical day of like workouts and you know, that kind of thing, uh, uh-huh. with the bobsled team. So for me, I'm working, um, a remote job while I do all of this and it varies for, from person to person, what their exact thing is. So I personally, during the weekdays, which we train basically seven days a week. Um, cause when it comes down to it, it's all about the drivers. Like the push is like five seconds of the race and these races are 60 seconds. Um, so the push is a very tiny part. It's very important, but the driver needs reps down the track in order to learn the track. So he knows the curves. So we're trying to get the drivers as many reps as possible, but, and then the push athletes will switch off like who goes because it's a little bit, it's 
you don't like you know what curve's coming, but the driver can actually see it, so he can kind of brace a little bit better than the guy in the back can. Gotcha. Um, but the drivers are there, some tough people going as much as they can. <laughs> um, but normal day for me would be I would wake up at around six a little <laughs> earlier, start work from six a.m. to twelve p.m. Then we have usually a team meal for lunch, and somewhere between 11 and two would be a team workout where everyone does their own programming in in the program or in the bobsled team. So I would do my workout, but it could be um, different from the other person's workout. Um, So uh, for me, I do mainly similar to what my off season workouts are, except in season, I'm not trying to get stronger anymore in season i just want to maintain what i have um stay strong feel powerful but i don't want to be sore on the next day so instead of doing normal deep squats for example i'll just box squat to work on that explosive part of it and not have to worry about being sore at the bottom (laughs) Right, Um, right so or on deadlift for example instead of doing low bar i will only do like high bar in season like just like that tiny movement just so i'm not like fatiguing my body because the important stuff is pushing at this point it's not about how strong i am anymore um so for me the workouts aren't as intense but it'll be like a good like two hour session where i try and get like i'll try and get three sessions in uh a week and then i'll do sprint workouts probably three times a week too just to maintain all of that because you, if you don't do it, like I need it mentally for myself right. and then also just staying in shape and in right. like trying to keep your body in at peak performance levels. So, so from, you'd say they're more functional, they're more functional towards the bob sledding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we would have practice. We do sl- the sled work. It's kind of like the non stuff that you don't really see on tv or something when you watch bobsled but the athletes actually work on the sleds as well Mm. um and it's not every sled's different so you gotta you gotta know your sled you gotta know your routine with your team and know how to work on the sled um and that takes around two hours and then you would go to practice from like around four to seven Mm. team meal and also working on the sled and team meal after practice and then i would rinse and repeat the next day so it's a it's a very tight schedule, um, but it's part of that grind, you know. Um, not everyone works. Um, I work a little bit more, I think, than the average person on the team. But yes, um, I would agree. everyone does what works for them, you know. Okay, cool. Now going back to kind of like gym stuff. So what are, what are some of your like personal records in the gym for lifting weights? Um, so right now I'm pretty strong, and I don't max out too much. Um, but I can give you the ranges, I guess, of what I'm currently around. Um, so for squat, for example, I literally in my workout this past week, I did four sets of five on squat and I, I actually did regular squat and box squat because I have a little break until the 10th, um, of December. So I'm doing like a full training cycle until then, but I did four 45 for four sets of five on squat um this this past week and as as you laugh and then and what is it and then i did 565 on deadlift for four sets of four this week wow, that's that's nothing so those those are relatively that's the kind of high repage for me the four reps so, <laughs> yeah um no uh, um so i was i'm relatively strong right now power clean i i normally don't power clean too often i just do the the pull part of the clean um but i can rep around like three mid threes pretty easily on that that's what i like to do where i still feel explosive and like getting a good lift out of it on bench this past week i worked out and i did i'm pretty sure 335 on close grip for five Wow. Or three sets of five. So, and um, then I do shoulder press on one of my other days, but it's just nice. kind of whatever. It's like 205 
on sh- strict shoulder press and no legs. Mm-hmm. Um, 205 for like four reps. So, well, and then the, the thing is, most people don't know like your form and Justin's form is just like so pretty. Like, it's <laughs> like, it's awesome. And so, like, they're going ass to grass, like, they're doing everything like functionally right. Yeah. And so, like, if people, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, I did the, I did squats like 400 something pounds. And then you look at their squat and it's terrible. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, you're not even getting like, like, everything that you could out of that lift because you're doing it wrong whereas kyle and his brother like i've seen them lift and they're just freaks like their biomechanics and everything is just perfect Mm -hmm. so that's why i think one of the reasons why you and your brother are so strong is because you do it right and and that was something that we just developed over time too of working out like i'm sure i've got i'm sure like even recently probably like within the past two years like i've improved my squat form where I used to probably not do as good form, and I definitely did get weaker with it. But I've ever since, like, I guess I've fixed my form or like improved my form. I think is a better word for it. I like might have gone down at first, but now I'm probably the strongest I've ever been um, That's with awesome. these lifts. So I think it's there's definitely like the cutting down, and it's not like I cut down too much in in the weight because <laughs> once you start going, I I feel like it is. It is hard to go down, but um, to a certain weight, but it definitely like just getting things right, doing higher repage so you get better form um, and just focusing on that. I think that's improved a lot. And it's a, you're got to, you have to be constantly learning during all these things. Right. You know, like I'm sure my squat form can get better. There's other stuff I can improve right now. Right. Like probably get a little lower. I don't know, work on my knee positioning on work angle on where it is there's like these little things that like you're just gonna pick up doing over time and like do what feels right for you um oh, that's cool so. so 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 kyle if someone wanted to lift heavier and become stronger at the same time right what mm-hmm. advice would you give them what, what, what are some things that, obviously we're talking about biomechanics but what other things could they be doing to like increase their recovery and get stronger and that kind of thing So this is one thing that I think has like really helped me get stronger since then. And it's like a very simple thing, but in college, like doing all all the schoolwork and playing sports and stuff. One thing that I like didn't realize during the entire thing, but I like did not sleep nearly as not as I should have. But now I like really concentrate on making sure for me, like I need my eight hours of sleep and it's something that, I kind of ignored prior to that, but ever since I've like really focused on just getting a good night's sleep, I've found that my recovery is a lot better. Um, I just feel better, feel smarter during the day. <laughs> um, so that, that's probably the, the main thing first is literally sleep. And I know it's something it's easy to say, but I, it's like probably even for me, like now it's still really hard to like, stick to that schedule but and people always say like that's an that's a thing to do um but it's very hard to stick by and i'm sure other people know that it's very hard to make sure you get eight hours because there's just so much to do you know in in life so (laughs) sleep's one of those things that you can cut out relatively easy but you you shouldn't and then another thing i think is just eating right is Mm. um like again easy to say but very hard to like maintain right. um so i've been pretty i'm pretty consistent with my diet um i found what works for me i know there's a lot of different diets out there um uh, for me i love having like white sushi rice uh nice. some type of protein so whether that be beef or chicken or fish like one one of those main things and then um it's some type of veggie like right i try and make it to where i eat i buy like frozen veggies all the time and i try and literally eat one of those bags of frozen veggies every day so what is that like a pound of (laughs) veggie yeah nice so um i definitely eat a lot of food um because train at pretty high levels most of the time when i train i actually sprint in the morning and i'll do like my running workouts in the morning go through 
my whole day, like usually. Um, so an, an off season regular training day, for example. So not traveling or anything. Just I live in Philadelphia. Um, so I'll run up the track in the morning, um, do full warm up for probably about 10 minutes worth of sprinting. So it's like a 30 minute warm up for 10 minutes of sprinting. Um, so it takes a while. So I actually bike to the track too. So that's like nice. a 10 minute bike ride. Um, so it takes me like an hour in the morning, like after getting ready. So I wake up like three hours before the start of the work day just to get my sprint workout in. Nice. Um, so I'll sprint in the morning and I just separate these out my and my lift because i want to get the max out of both of them so i'll go through a full work day after that um just like your normal i wouldn't say nine to five job because it doesn't have to be that way but i go i go to my job and then in the afternoon i've had that full day to recover and then i do my lift um okay um so that's a thing i also think like sp spreading those out and making sure you have these times to recover uh, is important. Um, Cause for me, like, for example, getting back to the question of like, how do you like get stronger through all of this? Like, yeah. And anytime I like lift. So for example, I squatted the four forty five this week for the, the four by five. I didn't really know what weight I was going to do this week. Like I don't, I don't like going based off percentages. Um, I know it's around a percentage that I can do, but I go to what feels good for that day. Like if I'm having an off day, I, I know I'm relatively strong. So let's say I wasn't feeling for like 45 for that day. I'm fine dropping down to like a four or five. Like that's a big decrease from four forty five. Like I'm fine dropping down if my body's telling me it's not ready for that. You just, can't make that a like consistent that's a, thing. Like, yeah, that's a lot know, of things that I think people make mistakes with too. Mm -hmm. You have to know where your body feels that day to in order to get strong. Because a lot of people they just go at it and then you're just you're cranking at something that's not ready to be moved, <laughs> right? And overall, you're just hurting yourself that. And I think that's again, this is something that I just like learned over time from training. It wasn't like. I used to always be like, okay, I got to do this weight today. Um, and you still have to have those days, right? You got to have a, there was a difference between like, just like not doing it and having a little grip for the day where, you know, like, all right, I'm just being a wuss. I should probably do this, <laughs> you know? Um, so it's been, I think finding that balance of like knowing what weight you want to do for that day and like feeling it out. I think that's really important. Um, I generally, to get stronger, I don't do like anything over five reps is really high for me. So yeah. I, I generally stick to the lower repage. Like mm. the by five weeks is usually like a higher volume week for me. Um, and I'll do usually three by three um, in general. And that, that works for me, um, keeping the repage low to get stronger. Um, but if I'm working on something like form or like I'm injured, for example, I'll generally stick to higher repage, mm -hmm. like lower weight, just to really make sure I'm doing things right and like not hurting myself. Yeah, no, I totally agree, man. I think people do too many reps these days. It's like, why are you doing that? If you're trying to get stronger, it's got to be low reps, man. Mm -hmm. And I do the same thing, man. Like when I'm doing squats and do the fives all the time and then, you know, I'll work my way up and I know you don't usually max out, but I'll do like a one rep max. And, you know, so for mm -hmm. next time, like, mm -hmm. you know, that usually helps me build more strength. Yeah. Um, so I kind of, so I have a deload week. I, I do a deload week every four weeks usually. Um, just to like let the body reset. But mm -hmm. one thing I've recently started doing is in my deload week, I don't do like a, a lightweight anymore <laughs> on the heavy rep. I do basically, heavier than what i was doing the previous week but i only do it is a one rep it's not a one rep max because you can do more but right. it's literally just one rep and so instead of all that volume you're still feeling that heavy weight because i used to find that i would decrease my weight after in the deload week and i would go back the next week and i would be struggling with weights that i should mm. like i was easily doing the week before and it's because like 
your nervous system just isn't used to that weight anymore. So I started, I started just doing one heavier rep, actually keeping the volume low. Um, so for example, in my deload week, I would always box squat. I would not do a regular squat, uh, super heavy just because there's no point. I just need to feel that weight to keep myself primed, but also let myself rest by not doing high volume, high volume being eight more reps compared to <laughs> one rep compared to nine reps, you know, on th- yeah. a three by three being the previous week. Gotcha. Um, and that's now, something that that's really helped me. Okay, cool. Now, like, you know, everyone talks about taking supplements, blah, 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 whatever. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like it's like the biggest thing to like becoming stronger faster what's your take on supplements do you take any to like mm-hmm. maintain your athletic edge like what do you do yeah so i take a multivitamin mm-hmm. um just your i use a brand that my brother recommended called zymogen yep um, i think they're they're pretty solid i really like their stuff we get tested for uh like you and what is it called water it's like world athletics drug administration something like that i don't know okay. we get tested for our sport so you have to make sure stuff is certified for sport and it right. doesn't have ingredients so zymogen um and another brand called thorn are pretty good or yeah. i really like it i, I love thorn not, in, not endorsed by them or anything but i i really like their stuff um it's they don't like add filler and stuff to it so you know what you're getting when you um buy it so i take a multivitamin uh i take some fish oil i usually just buy the liquid fish oil and Mm -hmm. i don't really measure it i just take a swig of it (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. just just take a swig of it every night um i had blood work done actually um to measure work myself and i actually had a vitamin d deficiency so i don't get outside enough so i take a (laughs) vitamin vitamin d with k2 um because absorption um and let's see, I'll take a pre-workout, um, which is uh, by Zymogen as well, that I think is pretty good. It just has like a cup of coffee, basically, to kind of nice, nice. kick, kickstart you. And then I'll take uh, uh, essential amino acids with my workout. Um, I take collagen as well. I usually just add it to my coffee in the morning. Um, I just put some in mine too, man. Yep, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, and... I'll take protein every now and then, but it's not like essential to to me. Um, yeah, like I'm. You get most of the right other now. stuff from your foods, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm out of protein right now, but it's not like I'm rushing out to buy more protein. Um, right. So those are the main supplements, and I and I do like taking supplements because I think if we're if I'm going to train at this level of intensity, where people definitely don't need to train at this level of intensity to get through in life, and probably in the past they didn't have to train at this level either like if i'm going to train at unnatural levels i want to make sure that i'm getting all the stuff that i even like my boss tells me i have very expensive pee all the time (laughs) (laughs) which he's probably right on some regard but i'm also making sure that i'm getting everything my body needs when it's training at these levels Mm -hmm. um and i'd rather have expensive pee than be missing out and hurting myself a little right. bit um so that's uh that's my that's take cool. on it i really i think they help out it could be in my head because i know sometimes there's studies that say they don't help but it helps me mentally i feel very healthy mm-hmm. um i i think they do improve my performance like especially if i'm having like an off day and i'm taking some of um like some essential amino acids during the workout i'll feel like better between sets so Mm -hmm. i think it helps um i think it's helped me get to and train on the this world class level um and so yeah i'm i'm supported by this sweet yeah i know i know you know when we were younger like when we were like probably you know college and high school you know, yeah. we are naive and we're like, oh, I got to take this supplement. I got to take this supplement. Remember how many supplements? We- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think there's a point where it's like a little too much. It's like, well, you know, and the companies we were taking, the supplements were like absolute garbage. Yeah, <laughs> Like yeah. when we look back. So um, there's definitely a balance. Like I think you should be like eating tons of veggies, like making sure you're trying to get as much from food as possible, right? right. Um, 
I just have, I have the supplements as a, as a nice, like backup, like security right. mentally also yeah. make sure you're getting that stuff. Yeah, no, I totally agree, man. Um, so Kyle, most people don't actually know like how much of an athlete you really are because seriously, when we were growing up, like, I remember like you, you just picking up like anything, like a sport or like any, like even playing video games, man. Like, <laughs> like you picked up like sports, like nothing. And like, you ended up like, you never played it. And then you ended up like dominating it. Now, if you could go back in time, like what uh-huh. sport would you choose to play if you could go back? Like, what's so, something, like other than football or something else? Yeah. yeah, yeah. One sport. I, I really like watching these sports on TV. Um, yeah. That's probably why, but I really enjoy watching soccer as well. I think the footwork's really cool with it, and just uh, the way it's it's like a worldwide sport. Just mm-hmm. the competition in that's really cool. Um, so that's one that I wish I played. But the one I like, and the one I think I could be very good at, because um, height's not as big. I'm not like the tallest guy, right? So like, yeah. I think one sport that I think. I would like to, would have liked to pick it up and like probably I think I would have excelled at is soccer. Now one sport that I think is really fun. I've like literally never played before, but I love watching it. And I like, I have a real appreciation for these guys is I love watching the NBA. So I wish I was good at basketball. That's awesome. Like, um, and then generally like it, it would be hard for me to make it in the NBA. Um, <laughs> but just given my height, but the, the coordination that those guys have, like being six, six, six plus, right? Mm-hmm. And just being able to move their bodies like literally super agile, super fast, right? And mm-hmm. these guys are like dunking, blocking the cardio with it. Like to me, like given like their size and how coordinated they have to be, I think basketball players, like from a coordination standpoint, like or it's incredible to watch. And um just the consistency that they have to do. They're playing like 80 games a season, you know, like that, that's, I wish I was just, I wish I could like appreciate it more by like learning to play the sport and stuff. So, um, and also with those other two sports too, I grew up playing football, right. And it's not like you can go and just play a, you can play a pickup football game, but it's, it's never going to be the same as when you have like the pads on and like it's organized. But you can go play pickup basketball or pickup soccer, um, yeah, and true. and just like find that in the park. But you can't go find like a a football game going on in the park and just grab a <laughs> set of helmet pads, you know. So yeah, no, that's that's um, super cool, man. Um, so we kind of we kind of touched on your routines and habits, kind of you know early and like you know your morning routine. But like, what are the things that you do that may be out of the ordinary for certain people like you know because like this is a human performance podcast and you know i usually ask like are there any kind of like so-called biohacks that you do whether that's blacking out your room for better sleep whether that's when you wake up in the morning you do meditation are there any things that you do in your daily routine that help you uh, perform at your your highest level like any Mm -hmm. biohacks Uh uh-huh i for me I, I have blacked out my window shades before. I've done a lot of these biohacks. Like yeah. I've done the bulletproof coffee in the morning. Um, and I do think a lot of that stuff does work. Um, for me, having the normal routine. So, for example, I it, it's a little different because, because I'm traveling every now and then. Uh, I am just doing a regular breakfast right now just because you never know what you're going to get a hotel and stuff. But in the off season, what I would do is um, – I do a super green smoothie in the morning. Nice. nice. So I can run off the ingredients for you real quick. It's uh, six ounces of coconut milk with no gargum. So that's already, it's, it's a giant high fat um, green <laughs> smoothie in the morning. So six where ounces. Do you find, where do you find that, man? What, what, com- what company is that, the coconut milk? Because um, it's hard to find it without the, that gum in there, man. Yeah, it's like, it's nature it's the green coconut milk company i they're all green i guess yeah but i just want when i'm away i just go on amazon and search for no gargum coconut milk yeah Yeah. so i'll do six ounces of that uh a full avocado 
um, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of cacao powder, a little xylitol, uh, 4.5 ounces of frozen spinach, nice. um, a tablespoon of MCT oil, um, a large handful of walnuts. Um, I'm probably forgetting stuff too. Large ham, a dash of salt, mm. a little bit of mint leaf, like fresh mint leaf, yeah. and a scoop of collagen, and then some chocolate protein. And I'll blend that all up, and Dang. and I'll I'll have that in the morning usually. Um, but I don't have a so that's like my green smoothie in the morning, and that's what I usually have for breakfast because that's like seven to eight hundred calories. Like that's just awesome. Super, super high fat. Like usually, it it my stomach feels really good. It's like feels very light, very energetic. I feel like kind of like I just drank a cup of coffee after I had that, and I really like doing that in the morning. Um, but because I'm traveling right now, um, I'm just doing a regular breakfast, just so I'm not reliant on that like green smoothie in the morning right. to do it. Yeah. Uh, especially like when you're staying in hotels, right? You don't. I don't want to be like, oh, I need my green smoothie. Otherwise, I'm going to be out of my game, right? Mm -hmm. So trying not to get locked in that routine. But in the offseason, I love doing that. And it gives me a ton of energy. Um, so that that's something I really like. Um, another little hack that I do that I think uh, like is generally known, but I like try and move around every day. So... I live in the city in Philadelphia, so I literally, I don't own a car. Um, I just bike everywhere. Nice. So I think I've like measured it one time and it's not like I'm biking like super far, like how the, like people who are cyclists, like they'll bike this like in a day probably, but I'm biking like 50 miles a week, right? Nice. To and from work or just going to the grocery store. And that little stuff like adds up to like just keeping your body moving. I think that's that's very helpful, yeah. um, especially like just staying healthy. Um, yeah. I think that helps me just like lubricate the joints a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. So green smoothie, biking. Um, let's see other biohacks that I do. Sometimes I'll put some magnesium lotion on if I'm really sore, um, nice. just to help the muscles recover. Um, but th those are really the main little things that I do. Um, I think the routine's key. Let me think. Let me look in my kitchen real quick. Let's see. That's where all the hacks usually happen. <laughs> to where yeah. I see it. Um, oh, another one. It's a little bit of an expensive hack, but anytime I cook rice, I always cook my rice in bone broth. Oh, to nice. get extra nutrients. So, <laughs> I mean, I know bone broth is water partially, but like literally, like anytime I cook rice, it'll be in bone broth. That's um, sweet, man. Probably so yeah. tasty. It's a, yeah, it's very tasty. A little expensive sometimes, but <laughs> I mean, I'm all right spending a little bit more on food when that's what fuels and powers my body. Right. So oh, that's awesome, man. So you got to pay, you got to pay to play. You got to, you know, yeah. if you want to play, you got to be healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So another question I have for you, that's a little bit different than this, but along the same line. So, um, for listeners that don't know, Kyle is like probably one of the most intelligent people I know. And Thank I know you. and he, no, he, he is, <laughs> he's being very humble right now, but, uh, he, he's read a lot of books on human performance and everything. Um, what book would you suggest someone read if they want to take their performance to the next level? Mm -hmm. So this book isn't specifically related to, um, I would say like working out and stuff. It's more of like a way of living and it's called the way of a peaceful warrior, um, by Dan Millman, I want to say is the author. Um, and the book just talks about dealing with stuff in life and like, how you should handle yourself and like guiding through like why these things happen and like how you should present yourself. And that's something that I think the lessons in it and just like going through life and how to handle things is, is very good. And if you live that certain way, like the way of a peaceful warrior, um, you will be ready to handle stuff and everything else kind of falls in place. 
Um, so that's something that I've really liked. As far as um, actual sports performance, one book I just thought was cool was the, it's called The Sports Gene, um, nice. yeah. which goes over genetics and sports and um, just potential between it and like various athletic genes and stuff like is having an affinity to training like mm-hmm. genetic and it, it goes into like little like details stuff that I thought was cool. Um, so, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. And I'll put those, I'll put those books in the show notes for everyone to see and grab. Um, so Kyle, lastly, I have three questions. All First right. question. And I, I ask these to all my guests. So if the world was ending today and you could eat anything for your last meal, what would it be? Hmm. I'm a big ice cream guy. So probably some cookie dough ice cream. I, I would, Dude. I would kill for that. I like, I, it's like the one thing like, yeah, I'm all about like eating healthy and stuff, but I probably eat, uh, some ice cream every day. <laughs> it just, it just makes you, it, you gotta, you gotta feed the soul a little bit sometimes. Right. So I yeah. Mean, no, that's awesome, man. That's, that's my favorite ice cream by far too. I always get that. So, um, so second question if you had one last week to live and you were in perfect health and you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? Mm, probably somewhere close to my brother and girlfriend. Um, nice. So wherever, wherever they are, I, I think I'd have a good time. He's also in San Diego, which is um, not bad. And she's in Florida. So it's not it's like a great places. Yeah. It's not, it's, they're, they're nice places to be. <laughs> Why well, I, I remember asked a Justin where he would want to go when he traveled and he actually said he would I think he said the same thing to be with you guys but also travel to the United States because there's a lot of stuff in the states that people don't actually know about. Yeah, yeah. Like one place I think would be I mean so that that's my answer but if there had to be like a cool place to go I would really I love snowboarding so probably snowboarding somewhere maybe nice. Park City. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that's Park cool. City, maybe you, skiing somewhere. Yeah, you and Justin did a lot of that yeah, this year, yeah. so that was really cool. Not um, this year with uh, the bobsled, but uh, hopefully after, in yeah. four years after that, we're hoping. Cool. <laughs> now, last question. If you had one piece of advice for anyone out there listening to live a better life, what would it be? Hmm, one piece to live a better life. I mean, I think for me, it's uh control everything that you can control and literally like there's going to be things out of your control so like if you're doing everything you can things are going to work themselves out the way it might not be the exact way you want it but things are going to go a lot better if you just focus on what you can do and you don't worry about all the uncontrollable factors Mm because events are going to happen like life's going to suck sometimes you know but you can either mope around in that or you can do whatever you can do to better yourself and do the best with the cards you have so you can be successful. And I think with that, if, and if everyone was just kind of good to one another, I think the world would be pretty, pretty good, but yeah, I would uh, agree. We're we're getting (laughs) there. Yeah, we're getting there. I think, (laughs) well, that's awesome advice, man. And like that it goes a long way, especially with your story and Justin's story and, you know, mm-hmm. like it just shows like you can overcome things. It's just, you have to have the right mindset and push through mm-hmm. things. Cause you know, eventually the universe will work for you. So that's, really yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. So Kyle, thanks so much for being yeah. on today, man. It was honestly an honor to have you on, even yeah. though we're, we're like really great friends. Like, I, like you're very busy and I'm really happy that you were on, man. So yeah, thank, thank you for having me. Yeah. It, Kyle, where can people go to connect with you? Like, do you want them to go to your Instagram or like, they could probably just go to my Instagram and, and find me. I think it's, Kyle, I'm not a big social media guy. Yeah. Not too big. Usually my girlfriend yeah. posts everything for me <laughs> if I'm going to do it. Like, I'm pretty sure half of my Instagram is her just stealing my phone. That's um, awesome. But I, I think it's Kyle Wilcox 41. Um, cool. Ha- the, the tagline on it's create a great day. So, <laughs> which, <laughs> which, which I'm a big, I'm a big, I, when you talk to people, it's not have a great day. It's a create a great day because you're the one who's in control of that. So. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So oh, cool, that's where they can find me. They can message me. I'll talk to them. I give them a little advice if they want some. So cool. Well, yeah. Kyle, thanks so much for being on, man. And uh, we'll speak soon. Yeah. Yeah. Good talking with you.
If you are enjoying the hour-long episodes that I'm doing packed with research and new advances in medicine, I would be so appreciative if you left a review and rating and even share with some of your friends and family. I put a ton of time into making these episodes and it would mean a ton to me if you gave me some feedback or reached out. If you want to reach out to me personally, I would love to help wherever I can. Message me on Instagram at the Unleashed Human, and I will personally help you out with anything you have going on, whether that is losing weight, better sleep, better headspace, getting stronger in the gym, cleaning up your diet, or even to just say hello. I'm always here to help out. So, lastly, if, like I said earlier, if you haven't already, you can literally right now go get my free book. It is seriously free. With no shipping, no waiting, it's emailed directly to you. All you have to do is go to www.theunleashedhuman.com forward slash unleashed to get your free copy of The Unleashed Human. Well, that is it from me on this episode. Until then, take care of yourself and as always, strive to become unleashed. Talk soon.